guitar enthusiast Lauren Bateman here and in this lesson video we're going to be going over Clocks by Coldplay which has a lot of little cool uh, things you can do for picking so let's get into the lesson video. Real quick if you guys need the chord chart to this video you can go to my website laurenbateman.com I'll put a link in the description below as well for you guys to go and grab that and if you're digging the new Lauren Bateman t-shirts and you'd like to support the channel, you can hop over to laurenbateman.com backslash t-shirts. I have some cool little designs over there. So if you want to go grab one, I'd appreciate it. But let's get into the song. So this song is a piano song. A lot of Coldplay songs are piano songs. And there is this cool little intro part that goes dee 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 dee. So I'm going to show you how to play that on the guitar using three string chord triads here. All right. So what we're going to be doing is basically mimicking the chords we're going to be playing on the open part of the guitar, but we're actually going to be playing some notes up here in a pattern like that to mimic this piano section. So let's talk about what we're going to do there. Now, while this won't affect what we're going to be doing on the picking, I just want to let you know that this song, when we go into the strumming, does have a capo on the first fret of your guitar. So you'll want to make sure to do that for the strumming portion. But for this first picking section, you're not going to have to worry about it too much. So we're going to be using a couple chord shapes. We're going to be doing like a little mini bar with our first finger. And it's going to be the first finger is going to play the 11th fret on the first two strings. So that's what it's going to sound like. And the pattern that we're going to play for all of these chords is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, that's the strings we're playing. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And I'm playing that down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. So um, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. That's the picking pattern that I'm using and how I'm using my pick. So down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. And that takes up a full measure. And what we're doing is we're following the chords that someone else is playing down here. So someone's going to be playing a D chord. It's technically a D sharp because of this capo. And that's what someone's playing up here. They're playing a little kind of D sharp triad down here. So this is a great song if you had a friend that one person can strum the chords and one person can play the little piano intro. So that is our first chord. The next chord is going to look kind of like a D minor chord. Well, it, it does look exactly like a D minor chord. It doesn't kind of look like a D minor chord. It is a D minor chord on the bottom three strings. Okay. So we're playing this minor shape over the minor chord that is being strummed down there by someone else. And it's the same picking pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And we play that one for two measures. So that's going to get played through twice. And then our final chord looks like our little mini B minor chord. If you've ever played my easy B minor chord, so it's the 8th fret, 9th fret, 10th fret here. And I forgot to mention that D minor chord, my mistake, I'm sorry, that D minor chord, the first finger is on the 9th fret, third finger is on the 11th fret, second finger is on the 10th fret, all right? But this other minor chord starts on the 8th fret, and it's 8, 9, 10. And I will go up for close-ups for these for you guys in a second, um, but let me play through it one more time. So it's going to be, that's the first one. The second one's the one that looks like a D minor chord. And we play that twice. And then the last one is the 8, 9, 10. And then you start that all over again. Okay, so that is the picking pattern for this. So let me just go in for a close up so that you guys can see what my fingers are doing a little bit closer with the chords. Okay, here we are for close up. So you see, I got my first finger. It's playing two strings, one finger. Okay. 
and then the second finger is on the 12th fret of the third string so we've got one two three one two three one two okay down up up down up up down up with my picking hand the next shape looks like a D minor and it's on starting on the ninth fret 10th fret or sorry ninth 11th and then 10th fret here so it looks exactly like a D minor chord same picking pattern Okay, and the last shape is the 8th fret on the 1st string, ninth fret on the 2nd string, 10th fret on the 3rd string. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. So you can see here is the shape. So we have the 1st shape, the 2nd shape is here, whoops, and the 3rd shape is here. So you can just practice working between those shapes. everybody I hope you're really enjoying this lesson don't forget to subscribe to the channel because YouTube will show you guys more lessons just like this one so that's one option that you can play over the intro of this song the other option is you just strum and I'm gonna show you a simplified strumming pattern which is just a straight eighth note pattern but we're also gonna learn an accented eighth note pattern that follows the accents of this piano okay so even though this is a piano song and we're playing it on guitar there's things we can do to make it sound much more like the piano so one thing is you could play this little intro or we can just play the chords over here so the chords that we're going to use are d a minor twice and e minor and we're just going to keep repeating that over and over great repetitive song now we have a capo at the first fret so remember that okay so it's the d chord relative to the capo it is the a minor chord twice and then the e minor chord once now for e minor i typically teach my e minor chord with the first and second finger but since we're coming from a minor i would recommend using the e minor with the second and third finger makes it super easy we don't have to worry about changing frets or anything that would be my recommendation if you want to use the first finger, you can, but I'm, that's probably what my muscle memory is going to do. All right, so just want to make note of that. So the strumming pattern is going to be all downs. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, E minor. So you hear that? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So how can we spice this up a little bit? We can go. And you're like, okay, now I hear the song. So we're mimicking this. We're accenting where that down pick is because down picks have a lot more attack than an up pick. So you're gonna hear those more. So the accents are going to be on the one, the and of two and four. So it's going to be, if I put my pick down and clap, it'll be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so that's where we're accenting our rhythms. It's going to sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And for the accent... On the accented rhythm, I'm getting more of the entire chord on that down strum versus the non-accented rhythms where I'm maybe just getting the top couple strings of the chord. So listen to that right now. I'm going to play through, see if on the accents you can hear those higher pitches coming in. So we got one, two, three, four. Um, hear that? Maybe you'll hear it more on the darker, darker chords. Um, helps if I play an E minor chord versus an E major chord. But can you hear there's a little bit of oomph on those accents? So it's going to be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and 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 four and the great thing 
about this this song other than when we get to the bridge something changes that's literally the entire song and you're going to hear that piano piece come in and out so if you're playing along with the song you can change between playing that little picking pattern and doing this strumming pattern if you're just playing along with the song because that picking pattern doesn't happen through that the entire song but it does come in and out in certain parts of the song. So let's talk about our bridge where things change up a little bit and what we're gonna do there. Hey everybody, if you're really enjoying this lesson, don't forget to give me a thumbs up because it helps show this video to more users just like you. So let's get into that bridge section. So this is one of those songs where something really, really cool happens in the bridge and what happens is we actually change keys so we're going to be using different chords on our bridge than we have from the the rest of the song this makes the bridge sound very distinctive and different and i think that's important because we've just been playing the same four chords over and over and over again we need something different to keep the song interesting so what they do is they bring in an f major seven chord all right very very different from what you're hearing so we go from hearing this I could play the chord right there it is so you go from hearing you go from this to hearing this all right very very different sounds so we have F major 7 so we got C chord, G chord, F major seven twice, C chord, G chord. So we've gone from hearing a lot of stuff that's minor chords now to major chords. So we have the F major seven to C to G. And I don't think they do the syncopated rhythm in this part. I think you can just do eighth note pattern that differentiates it more. And then on the very, very end of this bridge, we have another tiny change. We do four measures of F major. And three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and, and then it goes back to, then it goes right back into that little piano piece. Um, and that's, that's the essentials of the song. So listen for those, when the piano is in, when the piano is out, listen for those changes. When you hear the accents, when you don't hear the accents and play around with different things. I love this song. It's pretty easy chords, but it gives you a lot to think about and a lot to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to like, comment below and subscribe. YouTube's going to throw up a couple more videos over here. Might be something that interests you. Go check those out and I hope to see you guys in another lesson video.